and sir i have heard like you completed your class 1 ticket very fast you become chief engineer within 6 to 7 years if i am not wrong so how can somebody become chief engineer or master faster in comparison to normal 10 to 12 years which is average in india uh, yeah very good question because there are several ways of uh, going at it one after mechanical engineering you can join gme and do the normal class 4 class 3 class 2 class 1 like that here what happened in in, in india for every class you have to have written and orals class 4 written class 4 orals class 2 written class 4 uh, uh, class 2 orals class 1 written class in abroad you have a chance of to all the all the written examination in one go right the college will give you okay you are, you are no more to study you have finished all your thing in one day nine to one and a half years finish off everything like you are graduated engineer they will give you graduate engineer also then you go for sailing particular rank eight to uh, 12 months of watch keeping come and write your class for class for and the class to 8 36 months of class three you get the class then you go for your orals the orals are conducted by the authorities i'm so in case of australia msa in case of uk the, you have to go to that particular survey department like mmd what we have and after having a particular uh, uh, see time anyway you have passed your all your written already you after possessing that certificate advanced to marine engineering or this thing or uh, masters this thing which you can do both together combine together pass class 2 class 1 together or finish off all the writing then go for sailing complete your sea time give orals go for sailing complete your orals give orals then fast in this case you can 5 to 6 years you can gain and you can have the class the certificate of competency that's called coc sometimes the coc for like uh, the commonwealth countries like uh, india uk uh, australia they recognize the certificates so i have passed from india i uh, those certificates can be recognized it's called certificate of recognition cor so it is worldwide recognized so you can you can do it oh. faster in that way unlike here in Chen, in india you have for everything you have to appear every sailing when you are going for so any class you have to appear for written as well as orals if you plucked in orals next time you have to do the same writing again it's not like that outside this is the this is the one of the fastest way of becoming a chief or master faster than in india so my advice is that go do your fast keeping for 12 months 9 months of the particular certifications take that 12 months of sea time go to any any college in uk or uh, amc which is called australian maritime college in australia just go there sit down one and a half one year or take your money father's money or the money which you earned in that 9 months or to put it there complete your all the written exam there after go for sailing come back to work go for sailing Sit, complete the sea time. Do the oral trip. Not fast. You become fast, very, very fast. You can gain about a minimum of four to five years. Here, the same thing. It will take about eleven to twelve years. By this, you can do it in six or seven. So you mean to say that if somebody want to do class two and class one together, so they can do like they go to uh, like for example Australia. from amc they what what you have you have to do that that sometimes even in that uh, the post graduation studies is also the post graduation in marine engineering sometimes you can you can do online also some some time you can do or uh, complete it online give the paper come then do, do some sort of session and complete your written paper that will be faster you don't have to wait if you suddenly you got to have you have to go sailing and go for sailing do some some online also but you have to search it from their website individual college website which which is having amc is better and uk also some there are a few colleges doing 
already doing like this. Yes. Okay, so we can also do like if I want to give my returns together for class two and class one from Australia and they are allowing this, you can give both returns together and then I don't have spending to stay no, in the Australia. It is not that both together. Do this afterwards, sir. In tandem, you can not in tandem. After completion of this, immediately you can start with the other course. Also. Yeah, like we don't need to uh, go for sailing again. We can do it uh, one after other. Yeah, so for for right written exam paper, no need go for sailing. No sea time required. Okay, so if I complete my returns from Australia. And then I don't have money to spend there. I come to India, I went for sailing and then come to India and then I give my orals in India for class one and class two both. Will they accept? No, no, no. Orals, no, 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 no. You have to give orals there only by AMSA, Australian Marine Safety Authority. You have to go there and give your orals after completing the sea time. Once you got the COC, that COC can be converted, uh, recognized in the other common world, Singapore, Malaysia, India, UK, and all. So that is a common. That is a uh, that certificate equivalent. They will give C O R. It is called certificate of definition. It is not that you do that uh, written there and or else here. No, that's not. Okay. And there, do we have option for online also for orals? Come again. For orals, do we have option of online also? Like India now, we have uh, all orals, the orals. No, 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 no. Only online, you can do some some subject on written papers. Orals, no, you have to attend the orals. Yeah, but of course, with the along with studying one to one and a half years, you can earn also in in Australia twenty hours per week like that. They give you about uh, you can earn about thousand five hundred dollars. A week or something, a, a per month or something. It, it yeah, will compromise like, about thirty percent of your cost also. Yeah, we can work around uh, twenty four hours in a week. So as per that, we yeah, can. Yeah, something like that. Something like that is there about twenty hours or something, so that you can off time you can work and earn also, and uh, do your uh, studies also. It is possible. It is possible. It is there already. It, some students go, they work for uh, Starbucks, they work for some um, um, McDonald's, yeah, so, yeah. and so I have seen so many people that. Yeah. And so you also yes. have worked on the oil rigs. So I just only heard about oil rigs. I don't have much knowledge. I just know that they are uh, uh, taking out oil from the sea. So first is, what is the work of an engineer over there? And second thing is, how much do they pay as an engineer in the oil rigs? And total, how many people are there on the oil rig? It is totally, it is not concerned with the shipping. It is totally offshore engineer. Offshore washing engineering, offshore engineering, four years course is there. You can go in the oil rigs or something. It is not related to the marine engineering. But what happened in the due course of time, the oil from the land are getting exhausted like Dubai. So when the land oil, which is preserved for 150 years or something, which is being used, it has been dragged, extracted, and the oil reserves are becoming minimal. So what they do, okay, I go a little further inside. Then they have to leave the shore where in the shore, they have to dig out. They have to dig out the uh, by rigging oil platforms, okay, which are stationary in the seabed by rising and all this thing. They have extracted uh, the oil which are below the seabed. Now, consider if you go further and further, the sea is becoming deeper and deeper, 500 meters, 1 kilometer, 900 kilometers. I cannot put my leg on, I cannot have 800 or 9 meters legs to stand upon and uh, do my to do my uh, offloading of I mean production of oil. So in that where the VLCC or ULC they converted VLCC or ULCC are used to produce oil, and that is that is not going to sail. But it uh, equipments are there, everything capable of producing. 
So what they convert that, I have transferred, we bought a vessel for $16 million, converted to FPSO, floating production storage offloading, and about 250 million, about, about uh, 10, 15 times costlier, and they have made one more deck, and they convert them, that those ships which go on the floating about 50, 60 or 100 kilometers into the sea, station there, put their uh, oil rigs, that's called turret, right from there, about 17, 18 types of pipe, each pipe is humongous uh, sizes, very large sizes, 17 inches, 20 inches, 24 inches, big, big lines will be going, so about 10, 15, going there, go to the seabed, one they like uh, bore, they pump in water, they take out that 180 bar pressure, take out that oil along with the gas comes. So that that functions, that ship functions as producing oil and gas, which is called FPSO. I was there in this. We I was in the conversion capital, Singapore. <laughs> Took the vessel in Brazilian capital. Then we put that. Pay is excellent. Of course, it depends it depends on the racism. I was I was getting about four hundred and fifty dollars per day, whereas where I'm relieving the maintenance superintendent used to get nine hundred dollars per day, double the salary. We used to drop from I have to fly from Chennai to Mumbai, Mumbai to Frankfurt, Frankfurt to uh, Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo to Rio de Janeiro, Rio de Janeiro to ship by helicopter where I will be dropped in the same time the reliever, the British fellow will be per day. So per month it is that around time, that, time. that time in 2003, 2004. Okay. And there is a company which was Glumberger. Nigeria. I, I I was offered even twenty thousand dollars per month. Then like that, if you if you look into the thing, LNG chief engineers, now they are drawing eighteen to twenty thousand dollars a month because they have the they should have combined ticket steam steam. <clears throat> Nowadays it is all run by trifuel engine, gas, HFO and uh, MDO, MDO. So so those ships are even become IC engines. Previously, all LNGs are steam vessels because the fuel is which is extracted from the FPSO is uh, drawn from outside. Nine, 99, 92% they will export it. 2% will go for the flare. 2% will go for the engine room boiler consumption, which is called boil off. And the fuel consumption becomes zero cost. So the steam ships, the boiler used to take that gas and fire, use that steam to drive all these pumps and everything. The steam engine is converted. So those, uh, F, uh, those LNG ships are working on those places. Nowadays, it is tri-fuel engine, which is diesel engine, IC engines. Okay. So sir, what are the role of an engineer on an oil rig and how you joined as an officer on the oil rigs? Most of my experience, especially on oil rigs, are very few. I have I have taken the, the final session of the risk in the format of FPS. Though oil production from the land after finishing it gone to the shore and after the shore it has gone to the deep sea so my involvement in the offshore is through the fpso combining the maritime marine way of doing so that i involved but any engineer if today so want to join he can join right if anybody wants to join offshore they have to do a course opito opito o -P -I -T -O -O like uh, whatever the course that that is the one which is worldwide recognized they'll get a, to get the job in offshore there are plenty in there there are rougher boards there are engineers excavators testers and all hydraulic engineers so many are there that's a different it's not it's not a marine way of doing it is a, there's a industry which is on not on on uh, uh, above the above the sea, 
it is a land structure above the sea. So that has got nothing to do with the maritime, but FPSO is totally in conjunction with 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 the with the vessel or the ship. Many people used to be there on the oil rigs. About three times or the four times of the normal VLCC. Okay, and safe planning around 2025 in the VLCC or ULCC. There will be because there is one more deck built above the main deck. It's called top side. They have the compressors, huge compressors, huge uh, uh, separation mixtures because they are going to pump in high pressure, 20 inches pipe, high pressure water down about one kilometer, then seabed, push the, push the oil, the oil has to come on board, then they store it, separation, separating between oil and the water, separating uh, oil and gas. So many things are there and there is a top side Oh, by it, it is uh, three times, three or four times the the the, the what do you call safe man, man manning is required for FPS. And they have similar engine room and similar machinery that we have on normal vehicles. Hundred percent, everything is same, but no main engine. Okay, no main engine, and that ship the cannot button, move also. They 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 will remove that uh, propeller and. Of proper shaft. Sir, the next question is, what are the scopes of marine studies abroad? If we go to UK or uh, Australia, we know that we can go for our COCs. But what other further studies a mariner can do? What is his master degree? Or can somebody do PhD? Or can somebody do any other degree from abroad or from India? So what they can do? Yeah, specifically in Australia, Australian Maritime College, affiliated to UTAS, Tasmanian, University of Tasmania, they have got uh, post-graduation in ocean engineering, post-graduation in offshore technology, post-graduation in naval architecture for shipbuilding, post-graduation in marine engineering. So they've got uh, lots of scope is, scopes are there and the courses are conducted there. It's a very, very useful and it is internationally valid, recognized post-graduation courses. So if anybody wanted to choose offshore, there is a post-graduation course also there. Ocean engineering is there. So, sorry, they got plenty of... Uh, they got uh, simulation, they got test beds, everything they have. That's that's an example I'm talking about. So like that you got in UK, Singapore, uh, Alam in in uh, Port Lang, I mean, in uh, Malaysia also, the Alam, right there. And Singapore also have. And sir, somebody so, who have done B.Tech Marine Engineering, if he is doing post-graduation from Australia or from UK, so what is the difference after that? What he can do with that extra degree? Uh, the, the, the scopes are triples or quadruples. It, it diversified into so many factors. That's what I said. After that, B.Tech or something, any graduation, they can choose any or not. You put Australian Maritime College, the website goes for go for uh, marine maritime post graduation courses. You'll get all these things. The result which I am the the result is a very large uh, exponential career oriented courses are there. About uh, say about even twenty lakhs if you if they spend and uh, something like that they get the post graduation courses. They get to stay there and everything is fine. That's that's how you have to look into. And look can somebody do uh, this post graduation from India also? I have a uh, limited idea over that because I studied everything in abroad. In post graduation, you have got in IITs and everything, they got uh, separate uh, uh, like that courses are there. But uh, they are not directly linked with the brand. Yeah. 
it is a part of the course among all the other courses like PE, civil, electrical, electronics, or communication, ECE, like that. The, the universities have uh, will be having this uh, naval architecture, IIT, naval architecture, IIT, like that, they might they will be having. So I don't know, it's all in, in totality, it is a theoretical way of studying and completing those concepts. Yeah. You mean to say that if somebody want to, as a marine engineer, he want to go for his post graduation or masters. After that, he can uh, have more scopes. He can become uh, somebody in the office in good position or somebody else. But in sailing, yeah, career, it's uh, totally uh, same as a simple chief engineer who have done BTEC marine engineering. Yes, the, suppose suppose if he does that course post-graduation in ocean engineering, offshore technology. It is same as good as the engineers. And uh, there are courses like that. And uh, it will give you a very broad spectrum of uh, career-oriented uh, in, in, in maritime. Even ocean technology is there. Even oceanography is there. Mapping and all these things are there. Like that, uh, plenty, even... Uh, protection of uh, environment, green energy, then uh, the search is there. So it keeps going very, very vast. Unlike uh, here, marine engineering and uh, maritime is only for sailing on board. Apart from that, these are land-oriented courses, production technology, fuel technology, yeah, like those things which are somewhat related to the marine, but uh, it is not totally marine. And so next question is, uh, what is the scope of surveys? As a marine engineer, can somebody become a surveyor? And yes, uh, if they can become, so what is the course or uh, what is the path they should choose to become a surveyor? Yes. yes. Some experience, even second engineer or even chief engineer, and so any marine engineers having four years degree or something, the, they will call for like uh, Lloyd's register of shipping or ABS register of shipping, American register. They may not be even chief engineer, but they can become surveyors. They call for it. They have their own route of examinations. You have to just see any surveyor uh, position is coming up for Indian Asian region, they may select. Basically, with the more uh, experience on board will be preferred. But as long as they fulfill the requirement of entrance examination and pass out merit, in merit, they will get, uh, they, uh, they can be employed as a surveyor or surveyor. There are plenty of scopes for them. They are not, need not be uh, going only to the to, uh, as a sailing, they can go as an inspection because naval architecture ne should have never gone for uh, sailing, but uh, they will be inspecting the vessel with respect to the structural uh, wear down or structural condition of the ship and the seaworthiness. So, those naval architecture also there are some surveyors, surveyors already. So it depends on which there are 30, 40 major survey uh, companies are there, like Lloyd's Register, IRS Indian Register of Shipping, KRS, uh, Korea Register of Shipping, Japan Lines. So uh, these classification so so uh, societies are only conducting this exam and they are employing uh, the survey. Yeah, yeah. These classification societies. They advertise the particular company needs such surveys. They, they will not be they will not be looking for old people. They then 30, 40, 45 and all they will because the, the running around on board ship but going for inspection, traveling here and there, north and south of the globe. They require some youngster with the appropriate qualification. So that the survey can be done because otherwise if I go, I can also go as a surveyor, but I'll get exhausted soon. Even after tra after traveling one country, I may I will be I'll be fixed in my hotel only. 
because of the condition. So, so the surveyor they prefer after third engineer or something, and uh, and they have to pass. They the companies will have some examination. The company I mean, the survey companies class classification they are called not only called surveyor they call them classification society. The classification society will advertise for recruitment of surveyors. If they apply and get through, they can become, they will have the training, six mm -hmm. months training or the one year training in the prospective head office. And uh, they will employ you anywhere in the world. That is the survey system. And these are private companies, uh, this survey classification yeah, society. Most, most, uh, Except Indian, like IRS, Indian Register of Shipping, like something like which is government oriented, directly at the direct center of shipping, DGS, LR, TNV, Detna Veritas, they are private companies, private companies, but they will have, they have, they might be having for thousands of, thousands and thousands of surveyors are all around the world and each port, each uh, trade docks, they have. They will be given a room or something. How much the surveyor can earn? Because as you told, initially he is six month trainee and then for another maybe one or one and a half year, he is not earning that much. Company but... also, yeah. the traveling will be hectic. The traveling will be throughout the gold flow, boat to boat. At least uh, they have to attend the dry dock and they have to go for inspection. They have to issue the certificate, statutory certificates, and they ensure the ship is like it is like uh, it is like the RTO on the land. RTO, what do you call it? Regional Transport Officer for the vehicles, cars, and uh, vans, buses, and all. These like they are the RTO of uh, the ship and. Uh, Company will have a certain already arranged, like, uh, okay, let you let the uh, uh, Lloyd's Register of Shipping take care of our ships. So, wherever, whenever, whichever the country, whichever the port goes, they will appoint a particular surveyor and they will liaise with a particular superintendent, and those surveyors will attend those inspections in case certificate is expired, they will renew the certificate. Trade docking, they will be attending the trade docking along with a repair team and surveyor will survey everything. Uh, not like uh, easy, not an easy job, it is a very hectic job. Payment, you can say, you can, it will be the level of between third and fourth inch, uh, the third and second engineer level. But that too depends on the company. The Lloyd surveyor, they are paid in hours. So how much hours they are extra DAD and all traveling and all they get a hefty number of uh, uh, remunerations, hefty remunerations. All first class, uh, uh, all travel by first class, all all five star hotels, luxurious life, but tedious. That's for the survey. Yes, sir. And yeah. you have also worked on research vessels. So my first question is, what research vessels do? Are they researching for gas, petrol, or some minerals under the seabed or something else? And second is, how to get into research vessels? Right, we have got uh, two types of research organization. Like one we have got in Chennai, one in Goa. Right? That is, those are national uh, something, something. I don't know. I forgot the name. I'll, I'll come back to that. So, those come, those those are government organizations, research oriented. They are doctorate who are done ocean engineering and minerals. They are, they'll be searching for some because their sea is not explored. Maximum 3 to 5%. So far, they have explored. 
they can, they are aiming for like what you said oil or minerals or from the seabed and all then the research so for that they need some sort of vehicle so those are called research vessel or or we okay so that is there one is there near solinger solinger when near amet only one of them is there i'll tell you the name a national uh, hotel okay. one in goa one in here in chennai so they are scientists actually those people those organization they are scientists who travel on board and those ships are are called research vessel i was there in those vessel with the scientists to explore okay they got umbilical cord so we have to send them the the rod research uh, remote operated vehicles so we will be doing all this uh, uh, business of uh, helping assisting as a marina navigating like a dp vessel it is okay so this is a very good job actually very good job but uh, that is different uh, the, the doctorate level is different because they are they are searching like a geological person they they they, they go come on command board as a team there will be plenty of doctors they go using rov they go down come back the vessel is positioned and known position all these things are happening very these important. ships mostly be in the coastal areas only not going to foreign or in the middle of the oceans because no, no, no. we are i think not allowed to research anywhere in the world every, every country has the limitation that is 200 nautical miles mm -hmm. or the port area yes sir. beyond that it becomes international water within that 200 nautical miles every port they can do wonders and they can claim if they if they are to claim something outside 200 nautical miles it is un approval that is uh, imo so mostly these vessels used to go in the ocean take some samples from uh, the ocean bed and uh, then uh, stay uh, there uh, okay one minute i got that number niot 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 national institute of Ocean Techno, Ocean, Ocean Engineering, NIO is in Goa, NIOT, National Institute of uh, Ocean Technology, NIOT is in Chennai. These two head offices, they run the research vessel. They have few researchers, and I was looking after those vessels. And these are government owned? Yeah, they are government. They are government. And how you you used yeah, to take sample from the seabed, sir? Huh? How you used to take yeah. samples from the seabed when, like, you are on a normal type of that ship, is, right? That is that, that is their lookout. We are in charge. We will be running those missionaries only. That like uh, like uh, umbilical. They call this umbilical wire. They go down and eight hundred. 8 kilometers, 9 kilometers range by the belt system, by the wires are so long, very costly also. They explore. They explore the seabed. They take the sample from them. Scientists used to go down in the water by taking the wires. That is ROV. So they, they go in ROV. Sometimes, sometimes they take the sample by, by throwing some umbilical cord, which is, which is enormous in length, in kilometers in length. That is see that go to the seabed, pick up the suck the sample and come back and they will find out what is there in that. Okay. And, that how much, and, then I go. Huh? and how much a uh, chief engineer on a research vessel can earn? Is it more than a cargo vessel or it is less than or almost same? No, 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 no. These are all the not FG vessels. They are all these vessels like treasure, like piloting, OSV, offshore supply vessel, ROV, remote operated vehicle, research vessel. These are all coastal vessels, right? Near coastal. And uh, only FG going, foreign going vessel, they are paid more. And these are all, like even the scientists may get third, fourth engineer salary only. It's not me. But the name is Doctor. 
ओके एंड सर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज यू आर द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ जी के एम इंस्टीट्यूट सो वट आर द कोर्सेज यू आर प्रोवाइडिंग देयर एंड हाउ यू थिंक दिस इंस्टीट्यूट इज लाइक वन ऑफ द बेस्ट इन इंडिया फॉर द मरीन इंजीनियरिंग और फॉर डी एन एस और फॉर नोटिकल साइंस और फॉर जी पी रेटिंग वाई इट इज yeah we we were flourishing very well before covid condition after covid condition the it was it, the, the college is not uh, operating in full strength but we are conducting all logistics all pa the uh, bcom logistics shipping and logistics it logistics in shipping we have got dns nautical science we marine we tech marine and uh, gme graduate marine engineers uh, we got the gp general purpose ready i am recently introduced few courses in aeronautics aeronaut and drone technology we have drone on fitters i we have started the course fitters course for 5 5 to 6 months in that yes, three months we will be given 60 welding train get the certificate and uh, if they are sailed the match or even as a ab or something they will get assistant fitter next year fitter which immediately for those who have done a few months of on board this thing and uh, it's for them for a ab or a wipe out to become even a fitter or a boss it will take long 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 time by this is the fitter training and the certifications of welding and all they can get easily promoted within two years they become good fitter they earn uh, what they could earn after six years they will earn it in two years these are the courses so recently we have introduced those courses also here you must note the indian government the dg shipping and the direct of the shipping is also very much keen on, on recruiting or giving training to the women the ladies so the the fees are giving in concession the given concessional fees are given fee structure is very good high prosperity they were excellent so if you catch hold of many candidates willing to join machanne in any form as an officer or as an engineer or or as whatever it is and if they are getting employed they get employed their chances are very very high the fee structure is very less so you can go so it is the awareness that most of the people even the mariners are not knowing what to do and what not to do the through you the channel channelizing the requirement and the prosperity and the awareness what is what he can be what he can achieve it this would be of immense help for the particular individuals and to the society and if you are taking such a such a channel or such course of action that will help one and all that's nice so recently i have also seen that for women this line is getting more easier to get in to get job also it is more easier because every institute whenever the company is coming for recruitment they want certain amount of girl cadets from any college and from as you also mentioned that they have some discounts on the courses also but on the other hand sometimes on board uh, like when i joined first my one of my first ship so before me the cadet was a girl so people used to tell me she is like uh, if boat start is at 8 o'clock she may be come at 9 she may come at 10 and people also scared of uh, scolding them like second engineer is not able to tell her like in harsh harsh words like you should come on time or chief engineer also so that there are some the few cases, that may be the few cases when they are on board they, they will be they and they are to be treated in the same way and it is depend on the company or or the chief engineer or the second engineer is not having the capability to control that girl that is there those are few examples if they are giving leniency or uh, in, in that way it is not correct they are promoted because we want them also to participate in maritime or merchant navy 
it is not that they will be given preference of working less time or mild jobs or something. They should be at their as like other candidates, male candidates. They should work they, all the things. There is no compromise in that. We are looking expanding well and well. There is about 40 acres of land in Amateur doesn't have now even that one. This one, this college has got 40 acres of land where in engineering group of engineering colleges are there. It is it is one of the colleges best can be the best for to be at university level. So, so it is I'm promoting, I'm also searching for some research. This thing. The aeronautical drone technology, AI, artificial intelligence, offshore technology, and the trying to bring OPITO also is it's all in the, the, the process of development. So backing my experience, I would like to do more on this, provided I should get appropriate candidates or students so that the college and the student, the career maker prosper. And sir, next question is, it is very much considered that we seafarers, we are not good in saving the money or investing the money. Many people who used to sail for years and years and later they don't have so much money to like keep on going there, uh, keep on taking care of their expenses when their children grow grown up and they used to sail at very old ages also and they also complain like we want to sail because we have to sail, we don't have any other means of saving or investment so that we can take care of. So according to you, what is the best anybody can do during his whole career to invest and save the money? 100% true. Because, you know, hoarding tendency, you know, there is a term called hoarding tendency. Like in holding the new tendency. Ship, hoarding, hoarding. Hoarding tendency. Right. Even hoarding, hoarding. H-O-A-R-D-I-S, hoarding. What happens if the captain is not good? He is not. He is going to restrict the. Okay, give him to one one glass of milk, one glass of juice like that. First of all, he will keep it inside and locked. And uh, for the watchkeepers come, we'll we'll keep only this much. So what happens when somebody sees? Something there in the fridge or in the reefer room, he used to hold it. Immediately, he'll take that one or two liters of juice, put it in his cabin and start drinking. Right? This is called holding. For him, Those though it is kept for others and everybody to use, the moment he sees it, he will hold it and keep it for himself. So what happens? So the mentality mentality of people once it is not available once they know it is not available every time and and some captain keep keep uh, hundreds of uh, packets of milk and bread and uh, and juices in the fridge and nobody anytime you go you can uh, take take a sip that's another that fellow will not be uh, aiming for taking it to be back to his cabin or something these are some few mentalities what happens was come overall six months or five months or seven months and you did not spend anywhere you did not go anywhere you know your your mind is constrained your your thought is constrained everything is constrained suddenly you come out and your packet full of one side full of dollars full of other side full of that currency third your mental man mental is worth of Indian currency equivalent and all you don't bother. You don't bother spending. Even I know I, I used to buy about minimum of five to six kilos of chocolates when I'm coming from any ship. Maybe 50, 60 times I might have come home from from uh, after signing off. I don't mind. Now I'm not buying even a single chocolate. That my that time the money, the mood, the existing perspective and launching. Launching for uh, Launching for affection, children and all. You, you, you. That it, you are like let like a, a loose, your uh, uncontrolled dog. You go anywhere, spend everything. Suddenly, what happened? One day, your all the money goes off. 
I, I, whenever, yeah, whenever a seaman comes to this, comes to the shore with his family, immediately he will think, okay, this is the last time. After a week, he will throw all the passport and the CDs here. Forget it, no problem. I'll take some job. After one month, three months, when the money is shorted, he'll, he will search for his CDs here, passport, again go for the hunting for the job. It, this happens to 80 to 90 percent. And besides, because of this mood tendency, too much money and no money. So the savings, the habit, the very few people save properly. And because whatever is the same amount if any land-based engineer earns, he would be saving almost 80, 70, 80 percent. But the marina would say well, hardly 10 or 20 percent of his earnings. This is because of the mental, mental population of stay the Allah aloof, left the family. And that is the reason you have been paid high. It is not the brain of the shore-based engineer or a marine engineer is saying when it comes to knowledge or the brain or the uh, whatever approaching anything. He has been paid for the risk, staying away from the family, staying uh, all this thing and uh, keeping his mind cool uh, because all the things are happening, talking to the missionary, confined to your small room for oh, six months or uh, when you are looking and suddenly some crooks will come fighting uh, or well, not with the family, some fellow who doesn't know his face for years of uh, years you have to be with them. It's all awful, awful experience and that's the reason you have been paid for working instantly without any time break. Oh, oh, these are the things. That's why they are paid high. Okay. And sir, one of the last question is, like, how to open a own shipping company? People can open a management company. They can hire the people and they can run a ship. But how can somebody from a normal background, from a middle class, how can he own a ship? Because nobody, bank also not giving him million or billion dollars to... Uh, purchase a ship, nor from his pocket or his earning he can purchase a ship. So how can he own a shipping company somebody? Yeah, small, small way they have to start with, like a crew, crew agency, like chartering agency, like charter you are doing, like a crew recruitment, like a uh, uh, like a ship management. Slowly, slowly you have to do that. And finally, uh, initially start with the RPSL. I think we'll have to discuss this RPSL business, uh, recruitment, placement, so, uh, placement, right? Uh, yes, that sir. is the license, service licensing, RPSL. So you must get that license because and you must deposit, bank deposit of 10 lakhs or 50 lakhs something so that you start your own, bank guarantee is there, start your own, and if start recruiting and slowly, slowly, and from the synergy, when I know it was only 10, 15 ships, now to, today they have 500 ships. We ships, when I know it was 10, 15 ships, today there are 600 ships. So it is the development through sort of this sort of agency, like you got technical management, operation management, ship management. Well, then they start their own shipping, like that. You know. They have done so yeah. many jobs, like maybe chartering or something else. But how they got that kind of money? Who is sponsoring that money to purchase a ship? Slowly, 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 slowly. They nobody will give you money. Or nobody, no bank is going to give guarantee. The moment you start proving, the moment they start recruiting, the moment you are getting the foreign funds are dropping in the foreign. Okay, this thing is dropping in. When they can pay a fourth engineer two lakh rupees, and when he is running a management, right? Slowly, slowly, slowly they develop. It is not a day job. It is, they are not earning. They are not buying a ship within a day or something. It comes from the beginning, and there's a lot of effort gone into that. Well, we have last um, so one and a half minutes. So last question is: So according to you, what is the future of shipping because we have heard that uh, unmanned ship can come no crew needed and people uh, without in the engine room the ship can run and uh, maybe on uh, ports they can do the maintenance or something 
so what is your call on that what is the future of shipping how it will be from uh, last 20 it, it, years it will happen it will happen because the development in the development in the electrical and uh, whatever uh, automation ai artificial intelligence are, are going like like anything like ums uh, I, mean, i have also worked on ums but thing is that nothing will be as fast as thinkable as a human as of now the day when the robots or the ai surpasses the human brain it will have a full merit and i believe it will take 25 to 50 years of time but the initially we had already offices now there is no ready office initially all these things are some ranks will be will be reduced but that has to be some minimum manning a total a total unmanship is a disaster at this juncture <music>